Today we're doing a speed run of the scholars. Let's go. For Divi Phyllis, we have Beard. Caesar was Octavian's passport to power. His claim that he was descended from Aeneas represented the refounding of Rome as emperor. The whole of Roman history led up to Augustus, who took centre stage. Goldsworthy. As a young man who took on Caesar's legacy, Octavian also took on the responsibility of continuing the family success. Octavian inherited these expectations of greatness as well as the name. For all of his name changes after 44 BC, he was still always called Caesar. Octavian elevated him and his family into the middle of public life. Augustus spoke less of Caesar after the civil wars because of his own victories were more important. Caesar was not forgotten, only suppressed, and his glories added to Octavian's auctoritas. Williams. Augustus, in order to get power and political change, needed to convince the senatorial elite. Will Wallace Hadrill. Augustus stood with one foot in the divine and one foot in the mortal realm. By dropping Julius from his name, Octavian became son of the divine, son of God. Stania. The Octavii were a small senatorial family, and this would be embarrassing for Octavian later on. It was far better for Octavian to have a divine father than a minor aristocrat. For Imperator, Beard, at the time and in retrospect, Octavian exploited the clash between Roman and foreign tradition, Antony and Cleopatra. Octavian regretted not bringing Cleopatra back alive, but she was ultimately more trouble alive than dead. Poets made the war against Cleopatra about the clash of Roman virtues and Eastern decadence. Actium was made out to be more impressive than it actually was. Wallace Hadrill. Romance and, romance and Hollywood lifestyle are essential ingredients for the Actium myth. The Actium myth barely mentioned Antony because it was about the clash of values. Antony was an innocent victim to Cleopatra as evil incarnate. The chain of values is vital. Divine blessing, tradition, purity and justice, peace and high culture. Actium became a symbol of salvation for Rome. The myth-making requires that Actium be seen as a battle for Roman values. Stania. In the early 30 BCs, the second triumvirate became more apparent. The indication of military prowess suited Octavian well when the legions were crucial. For Augustus, Wallace Hadrill, Apollo was such a powerful political and cultural symbol that Propertius could hang his whole account of Actium on him. Because Propertius was writing so much later, the events give way to symbolism. Zanka, Augustus associated himself with Apollo because the god represented discipline and morality and was associated with prophecies too. Culture hero, Wallace Hadrill. Augustus was able to stay in power after Actium because Rome was forever in danger. The chain of values is vital, divine blessing, tradition, purity and justice, and peace and high culture. Metamorphoses is a metaphor for the change in Rome and in Augustus. Williams. The Senate and the people were prepared to accept Augustus's public words as assurance that the laws had been restored. Witchell. Senators were the ones most interested in maintaining the Republic. Senators were eager to see the ruler as one of their own who treated them as equals. Plebs saw Augustus as a benefactor to the whole city who provided bread and games. Galinsky. Secular games co coincided with the moral reforms to show that the health of the new age depended on moral efforts. The oak wreath came to symbolise salvation and the laurel wreath could be the same. Augustus was anxious to move past civil war and into peace and construction. Pater Patriae. Beard. Octavian's early record was full of sadism and illegality. Augustus attempted to micromanage the citizens in an intrusive manner. By listing his gifts to the empire, Augustus made himself look like a patron. The res geste provided a blueprint for future emperors. The mausoleum was a powerful image that showed Augustus would have a dynasty. Livia was highly influential, being so close to Augustus, and they likely discussed key decisions together. Livia and Augustus' relationship began with a scandalous tinge. Julia's many marriages may have led to her rebellious sex life. Gaius and Lucius were carefully presented as the spitting image of Augustus. Wallace Hadrill. The latter part of Augustus's reign was crucial for the chain of values. Gaius and Lucius were named Divi Nepotes, grandsons of the god, as they carried the divine heritage. Zanka. Augustus's principate appealed to the Greek classical period because it carried a moral message. Galinsky. The secular games coincided with the moral reforms to show that the health of the new age depended on moral efforts. Later representations. Cooley. Tacitus echoed the four main themes of the res geste, justification of the civil war and Augustus's impact on the state his foreign conquests and the advent of peace. The res geste continued to hold a prominent place in cultural consciousness and is reflected in Trajan's column and Hadrian's mausoleum. Wardle. Suetonius implies Augustus may have done certain actions multiple times, when in fact he may have done it only on one once or twice. This colours the reader's interpretations. Horsfall. We do not really know how Suetonius got to hear so much intimate detail. The mausoleum. Zanka. Connotations that contemporaries saw went much further. It was first a demonstration of power. It left no doubt about who ruled Rome's future and fate. Beard. The early completion was a precautionary measure and partly an aggressive assertion of power. 
the res geste, Brunton Moore. The res geste would not contain any false claims as there were too many who could disprove them. The accounts of his achievements are highly selective. What is omitted may be as informative as what is included, as it indicates how Augustus wanted to slant his narration. Beard. The res geste glosses over and entirely ignores the illegality of Augustus's early career. The Sebasteon. Smith. On the Sebasteon, the Julio-Claudian emperors are shown as active members of the Olympic pantheon. The depictions of heroes are used so the emperors will be compared to them. Emperors are shown as powerful warrior divinities. Most important thing is victory over barbarians. Images were probably borrowed directly from monuments in Rome. Tommen. The Nike Augustus relief shows peace and stability that Augustus brought to Aphrodisias. Augustus's victories are conveyed through the symbolic reliefs. The reliefs are not typical Greek style, showing Aphrodisias' close relations with the Roman Empire. The sculptures are evidence of the imperial cult and show support for the empire. Forum of Augustus, Nichols. The Forum created a continuum for the founding of Rome. The Forum has strong dynastic overtones. The northeast side is wedged because someone wouldn't sell, and this shows Augustus not as a king, but as a respectful citizen. The Arapachus, Nichols. The imagery speaks of the benefits of peace. It fits with a contemporary discussion of Augustus as a peace symbol. It's not quite as simple as saying that it is a bit of propaganda. Claridge. Most of the procession figures are symbolic rather than specific. The Prima Porta. Jenkins. Augustus's statues can be compared to Alexander the Great's works. Beard. The image of Augustus is one of power. Zanker. The Prima Porta is a copy of a statue made after Parthia. The breastplate imagery can be linked to the Carmen Seculari. Poets. Jenkins. Only a minority were literate, but these people could not be deceived. Horace's collection of odes were not published until 23 BC, and that is a long time in revolutionary politics. Augustus was glorified with poetry. Poets had the power to transmit glory to future generations. Beard. The work the poets produce creates a memorable image of the Golden Age. Goldsworthy. It is misguided to try to unveil criticism of Augustus. It would have been unusual if the poet did not favour the return of stability in old traditions. Tarrant. Mercenus allowed writers the freedom of expressing their support, and Augustus wished to be glorified by only the best poets. And that's all, folks. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.